12,800 and some odd pounds. The open range 371 middle bunk bonus room here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And despite sharing space right alongside very popular brands like two different Montana mid bunks, a Cougar, a North Point, an Eagle, uh, a Pinnacle, this is our most popular one that we carry here at Haylitz. So the question is why? The short answer is there's a hundred little things they do that are different, weird, and odd and make it pretty exceptionally cool. But the biggest thing is, with a wider body and deeper main seating slide, this has a nearly one foot larger living area, one foot wider living area than virtually any of those other names that I just mentioned. And although we call it a middle bunk, the one thing this does different from every other bunkhouse is gives you a nice big living space. And the open range version gives us the biggest, bestest living space. Now with the slides closed on this one, you're not gonna get to anything in the living room. You're not gonna get to that middle bonus room. So I didn't wanna waste your time staring at the side of a slide. I thought, hey, let's just get into the stuff that you know really matters. Uh, you can get to the loft, the bathroom, and the bedroom when it's closed up. Meanwhile, when you get to your destination, everything opens up. So, let's just start right up top here and work our way down. This has a whisper ducted air system, and if you don't see the square, then you won't hear the air. That's RV nerdism number 37 for those keeping track. Uh, standard 15,000 BTU air conditioner on the main AC. In a big rig like this, we will typically add the second, uh, also centralized air conditioner to really maximize your cooling power. I really do like this uh, more recently updated ceiling accent fixture that they have going on right here. It's just got a really good look to it. Now, this is a taller living room. It doesn't really taper down in the back. These have extra tall slide outs also. These are not just deeper slides. This is seven feet tall. Normally, you tend to get six and a half foot tall slides in a camper like this for most brands. So, the open range is bigger three ways. We have a four inch wider body, we have a six inch taller slide out, and a six inch deeper slide out. And now we get into some really cool industry exclusive things, like how about the fact that this has carpetless floor flush slide outs. So, if you're looking for the easiest cleaning thing you've ever seen, congratulations, you might have found it. Also, no heat vents in the floor of this. So this is uh, one of the things Open Range really focuses on is being pet friendly. And this is, you know, a big living room, happy for the family, bigger overhead storage due to the taller ceilings, more sense of space, and hey, we can bring the pets along. <laughs> I mean, that's, there's a lot of reasons that this is our most popular mid-bunk bonus room because it does things that no other mid-bunk bonus room can do. And again, even though we call it a mid-bunk bonus room, this is the focus point. You're buying this one because it gives you a living room it's not focused on a bunk space. Don't let the name fool you. So the open range has the biggest, widest, largest, tallest living room of its kind. A lot of neat little factors going down there. We've also got easy direct viewing entertainment straight across from that um, heat massage, uh, sort of uh, you know theater seat, cinema seat, whatever you want to call it right there. Now, down below that, of course, we've got our Bluetooth stereo and DVD player and all those normal things. Anything that you expect out of a big fifth wheel like this, open range does it, but they just do it in a sort of bigger, more spacious, open, grander fashion. And that's what's kind of cool here. Now, you've got night shades for all the windows, so, uh, like you see there. And all the windows are also going to open for airflow. So you're never really going to have that issue where, uh, you know, you're sitting in the sofa or the theater seat and you feel like you're sweating to death. You want to just, you know, if you don't want to run the air full time, you want to crank the windows open and get the cross breeze. This is going to be an exceptionally cross breeze friendly model. Now, mid-bunk bonus rooms, they inadvertently, but uh, kind of conveniently, offer another thing other bunkhouses don't or can't, and that is four separated sleeping zones. And that's a pretty cool feature. So, we've got our master bedroom up front, we've got the loft, we've got the actual middle bonus room itself with its own high-to-bed sofa that we'll see, and then back here, below that massive double, like that shelved double storage overhead uh, cabinet space there, you've got this full-size trifold sleeper sofa. Now, I want to stress full-size because the wider body of this camper makes the sofa look smaller. And it's not that they have, they, they have normal size side stands on both sides of an extra wide sofa. It's easy to miss because the body's bigger. So it's a skew of perception. But uh, both side stands have outlets 
So if you do have an adult guest sleeping back here, even the hide bed is CPAP friendly or phone charger friendly, which you're probably going to have in a middle bonus room like this. But notice here, this is really cool. Between the wider body and the deeper slide, both of, there's so much space basically that both of those theater seats can kick out and the one closest to us can still fully recline. So if you need to, let me count them up in my head. We got two in the master, two in the loft, two in the bonus room, two back there. We got sleeping for nine, up to nine people in this thing, assuming one of them is one of the kids who doesn't mind sleeping on the theater seat here, which usually little kids don't mind. So we've got sleeping for plenty of people, living space for days, and uh, we've got four separated sleeping zones. So maybe you've got kids in their teens that don't really want to share space or something like that, or one of the kids needs some decompression time or they bring friends, or whatever the case may be, you've got all kinds of separating sleeping zones here that always have like a wall or something between them, so everybody gets their own personal space, privacy, and sleeps well at night. It's pretty cool. Now somebody had their thinking caps on at open range, because they said, hold on, we've got a taller slide out than anybody else in this class or segment or price point or whatever. Why don't we use that? Why don't we put the biggest windows in we possibly can and make this thing just look and feel massive. Now when I'm pointing the camera right at the windows, everything gets dark, but when I point down here, you can see why, because it just lets in a flood of light. And think about where all these windows are located. They're on your campsite side. They're not looking at the neighbor's RV next to you. You're looking at your kids, your picnic table, looking under your awnings, plural, so that you know, you can keep an eye on things. Isn't that, I mean, you went to your destination to see your destination, not theirs. Um, again, I, like I reiterate this a bunch of times, but it's a really big fact that carpetless, extra deep floor flush slide, that's an industry exclusive quality. You can't get that anywhere else. So things like that, those are not all of the reasons, but some big factors as to why, once again, this is our most popular middle bunk here. Yeah, you know, the open, ra open range 371 here, it's, again, by far and away, by at least a 2 to 1 ratio compared to anything else like it. Uh, the most popular mid bunk that we have. Uh, so, again, big fifth wheel features you expect. Heat, massage, theater seat, got it. Dining table over here, freestanding table and chairs. Uh, it does have an extension leaf. It does have a storage pocket on that rear section. You can kind of see that little uh, seam in the middle where that would hinge up. So, you know, it's got that taken care of. And that's another reason I think this one's very popular. You'll find when we get into that middle room that this is very popular, not just among people looking for family bunkhouse use, but also work campers, people who want to use a big, nice fifth wheel as something of like a mobile command center. Well, this one has an excellent office in the middle, but as opposed to a booth, we have that extra large uh, space here in this deeper slide out so that you have more individual space for individual chairs. So it's a little more comfortable for sort of uh, couples, dining, engaging, all kinds of fun little things like that. Now as we continue up here, you see you've got a max air vent fan in the ceiling back here. So if you want that awesome airflow, plus it just lets in a little extra organic light, you got it. Now, you've got a little bit of uh, what my grandfather would call a Baptist medicine cabinet, but what I like to call a pantry tainment center. The TV not only faces the theater seat directly, but it also has some pretty good storage behind it. So, uh, very handy, not just for storage space, but if you want to add like a satellite or Blu-ray player, if you look down here, you see that they left you the nice easy shelf space to be able to do that. Uh, obviously, electric space heating fireplace below. But as we get into our main kitchen area here, right dead center in the middle of that slide out is a big, easy access pantry. And this is more and more models, thankfully, in the RV business have finally caught on to this. But again, one of the things that I think helped make the open range mid bunk the most successful is that they understood you need that dedicated pantry space. When so many other brands started building these, they might give you a little bit of storage somewhere on that forward wall that we're looking at right now, but they would often lack a pantry. The open range never did. Interestingly, open range actually created the very first middle bunkhouse. I think it was back in like 2009. And interestingly, it actually wasn't very popular back then, but I think they were just way ahead of their time. Then all of a sudden, a couple other brands started fooling around with open range's old ideas, found some success with it, and open range went, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're the ones that started this. Let's get back into that. And they've been crushing it ever since. Little smart details, too, like the way that that, uh, I call it a perfect pull-out pantry, slides open to you, so you don't have to go digging for the storage. Is nice right there. Now, 
to the right of the stove, you see some extra counter space and an appliance outlet. Easy reach appliance outlets are something these fellows are doing pretty darn well. Um, and most of us, I think about 90% of us actually, are right-handed. So having that counter space to the right of the stove so that if you stir something and then set the spoon to the right-hand side, it's more natural, more organic, makes sense. Residential size microwave here, and you have different refrigerator options. We are very partial to the gas electric refrigerators here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. They cost a little more, but the, it's, it's not if, but when you lose power in a residential only gas uh, electric only refrigerator and lose everything in that fridge, you will very quickly have made up for the difference. And that's a huge 18 cubic foot RV fridge. So traveling friendly, off grid friendly, just service friendly. It's another thing. Residential refrigerators, good luck getting them worked on. They are, uh, you know, RV fridge techs. You can't just, like, go to an RV dealership to usually get those worked on. You have to be, like, a Frigidaire certified tech at a Frigidaire outlet. Well, those guys don't come to an RV dealership to work on it. So this refrigerator, God forbid it needed service, which we find better service records with RV fridges anyway. It's easier to work on anywhere. Um, and that's another thing. This refrigerator, it is, it's called an RV fridge for a reason. It's made to be in an RV, bouncing down the road. It's shock rated. Residential refrigerators are not. Now, you might find a residential refrigerator in a diesel pusher with an air ride system and an auto start backup generator. You don't have those things here in an RV. This, I think, is the better refrigerator for a mobile application here. Now, all of our countertops here in the kitchen are solid surface. You can see you've got that high-rise metallic sprayer faucet, and below that you've got a, uh, a bamboo uh, cutting board that is counter flush with a neat little sort of aluminum roll-away drying rack to dry off the dishes when you're done. But there's more to the island than just a sink and some covers. <laughs> On the uh, flip side here, you've got five drawers, quickly, easily accessible, right within the island right here. You've got a uh, uh, like pots and pans sort of storage cabinet um, between this slide out wastebasket drawer and then you've got another kind of pots and pans storage place to the left of that. So this is a very well done full featured kitchen and yet again another reason this tends to be our most popular middle bunk here at Halet RV. Now we keep calling it a middle bunk. At some point, <laughs> we got to take a look at it. And this is a room that they have executed extremely well. Because this could be more than just a middle bunk house. They, you know, they call it an MBH middle bunk house. But the way that this is set up, like, you've got a very nice, large, comfy sofa right in here. And if we come in and sit down on this very nice, large, comfy sofa, oops, bumping into everything, you see that you've got this large office desk arrangement right in here. Now, that's a pressed membrane countertop, so if somebody spills a drink in here, no sweat, no big deal. You've also got all this extra handy storage space in there. So, this could be a sleeping space, this could be storage space, this could be an office, this could be a second living room. Maybe one of the two of you has something like sleep apnea and you got maybe a snoring problem and to, to stay married you have to sleep separately this is an rv that can do any and all of those things in one that's what's cool about these bonus rooms guys you don't really outdate a middle bonus room uh you know if you need it for sleeping kids you got it if you want it for comfortable couples camping you have that too. It's it's such a flexible concept that can just become and do anything you want it to. So as opposed to a lot of trifolds, a lot of middle bonus rooms have those trifolds. It's like they're too big for this room, and they always smash up against the cabinetry. Open Range was one of the first to kind of break that mold and go to an extra wide bifold. So it's basically the same size as a trifold, but it doesn't eat up the room the same way that a trifold does. I also like that you still maintain a breeze window in here and plenty of lighting. They do an excellent job there. But once again, we have all of the storage space available to us in this middle bonus room. Now for reasons we'll discuss more when we get to the bedroom, Open Range has moved their stackable potential washer dryer prep here into the middle bunk bonus room. So what you're left with is either just a massive bonus closet in here where once again if you are going to have more adults or lots of kids you now have more hanging clothing storage than ever before and 
Uh, you have a, uh, a quieter bedroom if you do add a washer dryer where it's not going to constantly be rumbling around. Now, above that sort of office desk area, you've got uh, full overhead cabinet space. And something I didn't talk about in the kitchen, but we can take a look at right here while I'm thinking about it. Hidden hinge cabinetry all the way through the RV. Hardwood cabinet doors, pocket screwed styles. This thing is, it, it's built just like everything else. It's just wider, yet interestingly, 12,800 pounds. I'm not going to tell you that's an ultralight, but it is over a thousand pounds lighter than some other middle bunk bonus rooms that you can find out there, despite being wider with taller slides and a taller ceiling overall than versus most of them. These guys are not heavier, but they are larger. Now, if you choose to add a TV to this thing, you want a sort of second living room arrangement, Man, you are just right on top of it. You can get, uh, I think, maybe a 40-inch in there. I think that's uh, what we have done for people in the past. Now, uh, again, if you want to add a chair or grab one of the chairs from the dining table, you've got a perfect little office arrangement right here. That's one of the things I like about them, including this handy little office desk arrangement right over there, that, that little drawer system. And the, the power outlets are in the right spot. If you want a little tablet or phone charger or something, you can. You have separate hookups for your TV over there. It's just incredibly intelligently very well executed, very well done in here. Now, from here, we're going to look at what's directly above us, and that is... The loft area. Now, obviously, whoop, let me pay attention to what I'm doing with my camera. Sorry, I'm, I'm like making sure I'm not running into anything and not watching my screen. So, there's a bunk pad up here. You can use this for sleeping, of course. We've got easy access lighting for mom and dad up here. You've got entertainment hookups up here for one of the kiddos. So, this thing has four sleeping areas and four entertainment areas. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But here's what's neat. This isn't bolted down or anything like that. You want to take that out of here, and you want to use this as an attic storage space instead of a, a loft? Well, you can do that too, guys. You can do whatever you want. Now, your master control panel right down here, kind of hidden away behind that door, but with a handy little coat hanging closet right here in the hallway as we move up to the bathroom. And the bathroom is similarly well executed. And this is another one of those things that if it weren't for the wider body nature of this open range RV, you couldn't pull off this bathroom. Um, so you can see that we have a dual entry here. Usually when you get a dual entry bed bath, you have to sacrifice and get the small shower, but not here. And they're able to do that because their body is a little bit bigger, a little bit wider. They have a little more space to play with. You can find a similar bathroom in some toy haulers like our Fusions and Impacts, but that's because they're wide body, just like this thing. Porcelain foot flush stool with all kinds of leg room. That is a seamless one piece shower enclosure right there. Now what's also cool is instead of going like incredibly wasteful with like some ridiculously long 70 inch shower as had been done by some brands in the past, they went uh, still plenty large. If you had to stand two people in it, you totally could. Um, and obviously they have that corner seating area there, but it gave them the ability to add this extra storage space beside it by going with a more moderately sized shower versus a wasteful oversize. And right next to the sink, where they're easy to get to, you have four drawers. And you might say, yeah, but there's not a lot of counter space around the sink. Well, that's because that top drawer is actually countertop. It comes right out to you. So you have four drawers plus a counter extension. Plus, you have uh, a nice little alcove back there to be able to set things, you know, if you need your blow dryer out of the way. With a nice little, well, actually a fairly deep linen cabinet space because that's as deep as the shower. You could not pull off this bathroom without the wider body nature of this open range RV. Now, a couple optional things to talk about up here in the bedroom. The uh, second air conditioner we're looking at, it is centrally ducted. That is an optional piece of equipment. Uh, all open range fifth wheels are going to be 50 amp service, however. So if you want to add that second air to a model that doesn't have it, you can. But it will be significantly more expensive than having it done from the factory level like you're seeing right here. Uh, now, the bed it's a queen standard. We have upgraded to a king, and there's a really good thing that they did up in here. Remember how I said, for reasons we'll discuss later, they moved the washer-dryer hookups? Well, normally in this business, you get a queen bed that you can walk around, or you get a king bed that you can barely scoot around. Well, Open Drain said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If we move the washer-dryer hookups, that means we can push the front closet back a little bit, meaning, you know, sink it further forward. And what that creates is the ability to comfortably walk around this 70 by 80 king bed in a way that very few 
uh, fifth wheels have ever really matched. Pinnacles are good for that, but Pinnacles are significantly larger, heavier, more expensive than this thing. So this is a very walk-around, space-friendly king bed model. Really, really intelligent design here. Now, uh, you can see you still have that big front closet. You still have all that extra shelf space on the right. And they could actually make the shelves heavier duty now since they don't have to make them removable to be washer-dryer friendly. And when they did that, they also thought, hey, you know, we're super pet friendly. <laughs> Why don't we give little uh, Biscuits, whatever your dog's name is, Rusty, maybe. Um, mine's Carlos. My daughter named our dog Carlos. Don't know why, but I love it. Um, we got a little pet pad in here. Now, if you're not a pet person, get it out of there. No sweat. Um, the other thing they did here is if you notice, they added giant dresser drawers uh, beside the bed. What's kind of cool, though, is because there's more space to walk around the bed now, there's easier th those drawers are easier to access there's more space to be able to get to them as well as uh you know more space to get around the bed to access all of the underbed storage and there's all the visual reference you should need we've got full underbed storage here and you might notice how this is all plywood decked you're not going to find osb construction in this um this is uh you know aluminum skeleton uh walls floor and basically, with Jayco doesn't like me talking about this, but it's true. They basically use the same thing Jayco calls a magnum truss roof system. Same plywood decking, same truss system, basically, as like a big North Point Eagle or uh, Pinnacle fifth wheel. Uh, across from the bed, we've got this uh, very generously sized uh, dresser space here. And there are some USB outlets on the right side of that. So if you do want to make a phone charger station, you can. Even up here, we still have those nice blackout window shades. And look, the sun is facing that window right now. You can't tell. I mean, when I say blackout, I'm not joking. And if you feel like throwing a TV in the bedroom, you are all set and ready to do so. But I like how it's also angle mounted, so it's not going to wreck your neck when you're laying on the bed. So, four sleeping zones and four awesome entertainment centers. These guys are killing it. Outside here, that trend of everything being weirdly different, but weirdly effective, it continues to be the case. Um, you can see this has a, a very large uh, awning space. And that's one of the things that is really beneficial of having a sort of extended middle area and upper deck is it gives you more space for big things like that. Uh, at the time of this filming, one of the reasons I'm even putting this footage together, because very little has changed since the last time I put one of these together, but a couple things I felt were critical, like the closet revisions, the middle bunk bonus room revisions, and this, adding the uh, stable step system right here with those adjustable foot pegs to make this thing marry up to just about any campsite. Those are some, uh, I think, big important features. Now, um, over here, we've got a one of the better outside kitchens you can find on a middle bunk bonus room, actually. You've got, uh, obviously, Dad's medicine cabinet on the right, but you have a real sink with a real drain. And that right there is something that tends to separate this from so many of them. Usually, most models, uh, when you have some kind of middle bonus room, you might have a little outside cooktop, you might have a little uh, outside uh, fridge or something. This one gives you those and a real sink, not the flip open dog dish. Still with the weather resistant rolled steel galvanized uh, countertops too. So if you splash water around, no big deal. Who cares? Uh, the uh, all your uh, like flip open overhead outside doors, which on this model I think this is the only one. They do have double magnet holdbacks, and which is important because that's a big heavy door. But that's also why they put double latches on it so that each corner gets sealed properly. Um, and uh, they are slam latches, not compressions. You can hear the difference if you tap on them. Uh, do the little wedding ring test now. A lot of people, if you're not familiar with open range, if you haven't seen my videos before, first of all, <laughs> what rock have you been hiding under? But secondly, you're looking at this going, wait a minute, what? 20 pound tanks? Are you serious right now? And the answer is, sure, 20 pound tanks, but three of them. So you still have 60 pounds of propane. But what they do here is 20 pound tanks are easier to exchange. And they're all hooked up, by the way. All are triple simultaneous hooked up. But uh, they're easier to exchange. They're lighter weight. So if it's Sunday and you run out of propane, no sweat. If you have to, swap one out at the gas station. Now, when you have a wider body and a deeper slide, that means that you have more of the RV hanging out past the stabilizers than normal. That means that it could be kind of tipsy, which is exactly why you get strong arm stabilizer jacks front and rear on an open range. So our front ones here you see go side to side and forward to back to eliminate that. And frankly, this would probably be enough. But open range said, why stop there? 
let's go ahead and add uh, stabilizer jacks to the rear power leveling jacks as well. So if you want this thing to feel like it's on a concrete slab, it can. Once again, 100 inch wide body giving us that extra space all the way through that big super slide we're looking at, six inches deeper. Those are big key pieces of the recipe that, uh, of open range of success right here. So pardon me if I reiterate those several times, but it's an important factor. Other things they do here, smart, simple, different, little material swap outs. You know, most RVs are built so close to the same. They're, they're constructed with 90% 90, 90 like similar methodology. Open range is one of those that is, it's, uh, you know, a little bit different in a lot of ways. So instead of plastic screw trim, they use a uh, heavier duty aluminum screw trim, which is far more resistant to heat expansion and contraction. Isn't that smart? Now, other smart things like right here, instead of the baggage door flipping upward under the bed slide where you have to duck under it, it flips down. It's different, it's uncommon in the business, but it's also easier to access, especially if you just want to get into your little auto leveling control. Now, I hope I left this unlocked. Indeed I did. Our uh, fully privatized, but notice completely separated um, uh, docking station right here. Because if you look, it does not eat into our pass-through storage space. Not in the slightest. And that's uncommon. A lot of times your docking stations eat into that a little bit. Larger 10 gallon water heater. Now. You notice how this is fully skirted too. The skirting goes all the way down and wraps around to the uh, I-beams. That's really just the beginning of where they start to separate themselves from a lot of brands when it comes to their insulation package. Um, so Open Range and Jayco have the uh, best published cold camp testing data of any brand that I've seen. Now, like we got this beautiful Montana here. I'm not worried about Montanas. They uh, are and have been zero degree rated since 05. But one thing I do like about Open Range is they actually do publish their data. And like I said, Open Range and Jayco have the best published data of any manufacturers out there. Um, the uh, uh, There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of things I dislike when people start, uh, manufacturers specifically, start advertising their thermal packages and their R values and whatnot. And something open range does that I don't like, and I try to be fair, guys, because it, you can dislike it, but at the end of the day, some things matter and some things don't. Um, they use a double-sided radiant foil, like, uh, you know, heat reflective barrier, and they call it an R38 with an asterisk. That stuff, it doesn't really have an R value. It's a heat reflective material. It's a completely, completely different thing. It's effective, but it's not an R value. So when someone says something has an R40, an R52 roof, an R whatever, that's not true. So do you care what they say the R value is? Or do they care? do you care about how it actually performs? Because once again, remember, Open ranges perform better than nearly any other brand in hot cold camp testing data. So what are they doing different? Because almost any big RV like this, they're going to say, well, what we do is we have batten insulation in the roof, and then we put a layer of that heat reflective stuff there, and then we're different because we wrap it around the nose cap. They all say the same thing. They're all different in the exact same way. Isn't that funny? Well, of course, open range does that. They also do the same thing in the slide outs. Where they're different, really, is in the underbelly because they don't just have an enclosed heated belly they have dual layers of insulation in the underbelly it is forced air heated but it's also got a cyclical heating system one of those heat vents that you saw in the bathroom the one uh, next to the toilet in an area where you can't step is a, uh, a heat return so it forces hot air into the belly and then it continuously cycles. And cyclical airflow is really the secret to their sauce. And that's what helps them achieve uh, better cold testing data than nearly anybody else. Um, two inch receiver hitch on the back here also allows you to add a bike rack or a small generator tray or something like that without voiding your three year structural warranty. Uh, I am glad that uh, most of the brands that we carry here at Halid RV that have that three year structural warranty, most of them do give you some kind of uh, receiver hitch on the back so you can do things like add a bike rack without voiding that. That's a better, smarter construction aspect. And uh, oh, one more, I'm like, I'm not, I know I'm forgetting something. These giant 16 inch radial tires, let me get over here. And these are riding on Dexter axles with a Dexter rubber shock dampening suspension. This is not the dollar cheaper option, guys. But you talk to anybody who's ever looked into suspension stuff, the name Dexter's legendary. Um, 
I mean, anybody can make a mistake, but if these guys do it, it's like a lightning strike. In the 10 plus years that I've been doing this, we've had one problem with like a Dexter axle. It was a fluke thing, and man, they were all over taking care of it. They are proud of their name. They build a heck of a product, and it's nice to see that on here. Better, smoother shock dampening uh, suspension system. Now, Open Ranges are one of the brands that I think you there's more to look at on the roof than you realize. Like, when I look around here, you see a lot of these off-white, tan skin roofs, and then you get to the Open Range, and it is stark white, brother. This is white, brother. Well, what's it doing for you? Why? Why does it look different? It's a different material. If you look around, almost all of these things basically use the same roof skin. It's either going to be called TPO, or it's going to be called rubber, but it's basically the same thing, uh, if you look at it from a molecular standpoint. Well, that's why they always have the same 10 or 12 year roof skin warranty. And if, by the way, you're ever talking to somebody and they tell you that their camper has a 10 or 12 year roof warranty and then they stop talking, get away from them because they're snake oil salesmen who are trying to tell you half of the truth to sort of trick you into buying from them. I don't think we need to do that here. So, what's different on the open range? Why am I up here? First of all, it's a PVC based roof membrane. It's a different kind of material. It's very uncommon in the industry, actually. Uh, it has its own 15-year warranty, but that's, remember, just the roof skin. The cool thing is not only is it longer, but it also requires less maintenance to maintain that warranty than any of those other manufacturers or materials. It also has superior UV reflectivity, helps keep the RV cooler. It doesn't chalk. Um, it doesn't uh, promote the growth of black algae, which means uh, less black streaks. You know, it's a better grade material. Now, also, look at how ridiculously, almost comically, over heavy handed they are with the sealants around all of their roof fixtures. You, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have problems with these guys. I mean, they go way above and beyond what they have to do in that regard to make sure that this thing is and will stay in excellent condition long term. Um, that's that's the goal behind these. And like I said, the roof construction of this is virtually identical to a Jayco. Like I said, Jayco doesn't like when I say that, but it's true. They're both doing basically the same thing. Um, we've got plywood roof decking, extra thick trusses and everything, the same essential insulation package below it. They're getting the job done. Now, there's a lot of different oddball qualities about these open ranges. And that's what I love about them. Because when I look out amongst the sea of inventory here, the names might change, but very often the story stays the same. So much of this stuff has homogenized construction because manufacturers have found what works and they've all kind of zeroed in on pretty much the same thing. Like, I get that. It makes sense. I'm not saying they're wrong for doing it. But I respect open range for bucking the trend and daring to be different. And that's what I like about Halet RV. Now, if you appreciate that we're willing to get up here on the roof in windy conditions today when I probably shouldn't be up here, just to show you a different roof membrane, I sure hope you give us the opportunity to work with you because I don't care where you live. No one is too far away to work with Halet RV. No one is too far away. Don't assume that just because you're in Georgia or you're in California and we're in Michigan that we can't do business, guys. You need to call, you need to quote, you need to find out and don't assume. Because if you assume, the only thing you could be losing out on is thousands of dollars. You could be paying more than you have to. And wouldn't you rather know than just assume or guess? A phone call, that's all it takes. So give us a call, guys. Take care, stay safe, have fun, happy camping, everyone. And remember, at Halet RV, we don't do dealer fees, but we do hitching, pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.